Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes, and this is my final video for now, where I go deeper into every corner of Dorico's expression maps. We're moving on from looking at technique switches today to discover playback options overrides and mutual exclusion groups. Lucky you. Dorico's library of options is quite immense. There are options to determine which musical rules Dorico should follow, how to group and beam notes, when to show accidentals, how to notate percussion, and so on. There are options for how notations should be drawn graphically, from design, to size, to position. There are options for how you should set up each of your layouts, how full scores should differ from instrumental parts, whether staves show cues, or multi-bar rests, or fingering. And one of the sets of options found in this exhaustive library is playback options. Now, I'm going to spend more time on playback options in future videos in this series. So, depending on where you are on the Sacred Timeline, you might be able to jump ahead and watch those now. As of the time of release of this video, Future Me is still working on those videos, so you'll just have to be patient. Essentially though, playback options give you control over many aspects of how Dorico approaches the playback of the music in your projects. You can control the overall scale of dynamics, the emphasis to place on various beats of the bar, and customize Dorico's humanization features, pitch contour emphasis, and voice balancing. There are options for setting the relative length of notes that have articulations, such as staccato and slurs. You can set the rhythmic feel of a piece to play it swung. And then there are notation-specific options for things like gliss lines, pedal lines, and trills. However, as I've said a few times through this series, sound libraries don't all work the same way. And they all have their own distinctive qualities this can make it tricky to find a single set of playback options that work for all instruments in your project, especially if you're mixing and matching sounds from different libraries. That's what the playback options overrides in the expression map are for. You can handpick individual playback options and set them to be a different value only for the instruments that are assigned to the expression map. Let's look at an example. I really enjoy working with the Spitfire Audio Heirloom Library. It's a small, intimate ensemble with some really interesting instruments. Just listen to the wonderful raspy quality you can get from this contrabass clarinet. However, often I don't need that quality of sound. And listen to this example, which by using Dorico's default playback options, strays into the territory of the harsher timbre. So what we can do is open the expression map the instrument's using and switch to the playback option overrides section. I want to limit the extent to which Dorico pushes the dynamic slider in the heirloom preset to the max, and I can override a couple of options to do this. Firstly, if I increase the maximum dynamic level in the dynamic curve, I'm effectively giving Dorico more room to play with here. So there's a bit more space between say, MF and F. Then if I also reduce the impact of pitch contour emphasis, the humanization feature that mimics how we tend to play stronger through rising passages and trail off a little through descending passages, Dorico won't push the boundaries of this MF marking as much, even though these are a couple of bars that are dramatically moving upward. There are loads of options available to override here. So if you're experiencing some unwanted behavior in an expression map and the sound library preset isn't blending with the ensemble quite as you hoped, then it is worth having a look through these. Before I wrap up these videos about the more advanced features of expression maps, I'd like to talk about one more topic, mutual exclusion groups. Okay, 
we're right down in the basement of the expression map now. But as is often the case with basements, you can stumble across something you're convinced will be really useful one day. A mutual exclusion group is a collection of playback techniques that cannot be in force for an instrument at the same time. They're what makes sure Dorico switches away from various techniques so they don't conflict with certain others. For example, Arco cancels pits. Let's look at the expression map for the Iconica sketch strings. We can see all the switches set up as you might expect. Let's open this last section. By default, Dorico creates mutual exclusion groups automatically. To have a closer look at them, we need to temporarily uncheck that setting. This first group ensures you can't have legato and non-legato at the same time. This second primary string group contains all the various bowed techniques and pizzicato. Again, none of these can be executed at the same time as any of the others in the group. The third group is for vibrato. Naturally, you don't want to be sending messages to an instrument triggering vibrato and non-vibrato at once. Let's quickly start a new expression for a pretend flute and see these come into being. With this blank expression map, look, no mutual exclusion groups. Let's add a legato technique switch and maybe a vibrato technique switch. Now, when you open the mutual exclusion group section, you can see a legato group and a vibrato group. Dorico has constructed these based on the switches we added. If I create a new playing technique and associated playback technique, you'll notice it appear in a new auto mutual exclusion group. If I'm concerned it might conflict with another technique, I can flip to manual and add the new technique to an existing group. What more can I say about mutual exclusion groups? Well, you will likely find you'll very rarely have to edit them. And to be honest, you will generally not even need to think about them. However, I'm very glad that I can say honestly that I've told you about them. And one day, they might just save your expression map. So that's playback options, overrides, and mutual exclusion groups in expression maps here in Dorico. I'm already hard at work planning the next set of videos about playback. I'm going to look at playback options in more detail. Further down the line, I'll look at play mode and the key editor before moving on to the mixer and some other playback features such as independent voice playback and MIDI trigger regions. So stick with us to keep learning. I do hope you found these past few videos diving deeper into all aspects of expression maps useful. If you have, I'd be honored if you were to like this video. Thank you so much. Please leave a comment below and remember to subscribe to the Dorico channel to hear about new videos as we release them. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching. Thank you.